So first, it's important to understand your role as a data manager in this program. So we know that data manager job titles and overall responsibilities will differ from district to district, and it includes district test coordinators, EMIS coordinators, building administrators, many others. But we want to define the actual data manager role in the contents of the K-Ready system. So for this program, a data manager is an individual that has access to teacher and student demographic information in the K-Ready system for the K-Ready assessments. Data managers, they're going to be responsible for adding and managing teachers, students, and enrollment data in the system, as well as exporting any teacher collected student scores and ratings for EMIS reporting. So you must be identified as the assessment data manager, preschool and kindergarten in OEDS prior to having access to the K-Ready system as a data manager. So visit the OEDS page on the Ohio Department of Education site for information regarding how to be added as an assessment data manager, preschool and kindergarten for your location. Once you are set up as the assessment data manager, in OEDS, you will need to reach out to the help desk to have your account set up. You will receive an email once that account is ready. <clears throat> Excuse me. Be sure to watch for the email. The link in the email it, to set your password will expire after 24 hours. So be sure to check your spam folders. And if no messages are received in that specific time frame, you'll wanna contact the help desk for assistance with that process. So for programs licensed by the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services who are not established in the Ohio Department of Education's directory system, the data manager can be assigned to any administrator listed in the Ohio Child Licensing and Quality System, the OCLQS. So as long as they're listed in that role as administrator in the OCLQS, they can then reach out to us about getting the data manager role. We know that um, there are some folks that are not using the K-Ready system to do their ELA. And, you know, certainly that's okay, but we are encouraging everyone to, to utilize the K-Ready system because of the benefits of the, the tracking, the benefits of being able to pull the kinds of reports and see the, the, the data that's being collected in different ways. Uh, many of you know there are three ways to get data into the system. Certainly that can be done manually, um, and that's typically done as a one-off one kind of situation, like you're, you're entering data um, one student or one teacher at a time or a few at a time, not a great many. The bulk loader is the second way to get the information in, and that's the way that's typically used. And that's done, again, as the name implies, in bulk, right, when you're adding many users at a time or when you're needing to trigger something in the system, such as a transfer. And then the third way is the automated process. This is typically done with uh, larger districts that want to kind of set up some reoccurring pools of the data, if you will. The data guidelines are supplied by the vendor partner to give details related to specifications for adding and retrieving data from the K-Ready system. You know, some data is needed for the system in order for it to work, while other data is needed in order for the system to generate reports. Please note, it is important for all locations um, to remember that everyone will need to reload their user and student data in the system at the start of each assessment window. And this is done for three key reasons. I know folks are may be thinking, well, I've, I loaded it in the fall. Why do I have to load it in the spring? Or I loaded it in the winter. Why do I have to do it again in the spring? Here's why. Number one, we, we do this to ensure that the correct data token is being used at the start of each assessment window. The second reason is to ensure that the enrollments are correct. And then the third reason is to ensure that individual user and student data is correct. There are two recommendations we'd like to give you uh, specific to reloading your data. The first is that data managers should export a copy of the data downloads from the system to review and confirm that the data is accurate. Um, you may have some changes. There may be some students that have left. There may be some teachers that may have information that's different that needs to be updated. We wanna make sure that you do a data download copy first and check that information. The second recommendation is that 
when reloading data, we are recommending that you use the all fields template. We want to make sure that you're loading all the data, especially in the spring. Um, that will save you a lot of time at the end as it relates to generating reports and things of that nature. You won't have to go back and add data later on if you just do it at the beginning. Again, these are not requirements. They are recommendations that we think will make your life a little bit easier. The teacher file uh, template, add all of this information for your teachers when you're reloading your file. The student file, the icon for system requirements. That means if you just want to get it in the system, this is what's required to do that. This icon represents what you need for reporting. So again, we're suggesting and recommending that you use the all fields template and you load the information for that in order to get the reports generated that you're going to need at the end of the window. Here you see district ID, local district student number, and the state student ID. Um, again, these are uh, fields that you're going to need to enter in order to uh, get the reports uh, out of the system as well. Down here, I want to just you know highlight date of birth. We're going to talk about the formatting of that here in a, in a bit, but the format for that and the student ID and the district IDs um, are very specific, and you'll need to make sure that those formats are correct uh, when entering your, your information. I want to uh, show here, making sure that you enter the gender, the IEP, and the disability codes, as well as the EL code and economic disadvantage code. The remaining fields are not required, nor are they necessary in order to generate reports out of the K-Ready system. So just wanted to make sure that you understood what fields were recommended and required for the student file. Next is the enrollment file. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a new token for the spring. It's going to be spring 2023-ELA. That's the new data token. And so we want to make sure that that token is used when entering um, the enrollments. Again, the enrollments link the teachers and the students um, in the system. And so you'll have to reload the enrollment file in order for those linkages to occur. And as you see here, um, all of the fields are required for that. The location administrator template, a very simple file to load. Uh, all you need is the building administrator's district ID and school ID and administrator's email. Again, this is a recommendation that um, we are giving you and asking you to do this at the beginning of the window so that building administrators have access to the reports for their, for their locations. Next is the data formatting. As I mentioned earlier, there are some specific things you need to remember about the formatting. The first is with regards to the templates, please use the templates from the system. Don't create your own template. Please download the CSV files from the system. Use that. Uh, do not change or remove the headers and then use the formatting uh, for the cells. You'll have to format the cells uh, for leading zeros. Uh, both for the district ID and the school ID. So as you know, in Ohio, we have six digits for those, and some of the IRNs begin with zeros or have zeros in them. So it's important um, that you format the field for zeros, and we'll show you that as we do the live demo. Um, next, the date of birth has to be formatted with uh, the month as a two-digit code, the day as a two-digit code, and the year as a four-digit code. Again, we use the CSV format, comma-separated uh, formatting for that. And again, if there are questions about that, there's information in the data guidelines manual that can walk you through that. We also have some help files on how to create these comma-separated uh, files as well as the leading zeros. So we want to make sure that you format your information in the correct way uh, to get it in the system. There are a couple of things that you need to know specific to updating records. And as you see here, um, there may be changes. You know, there could be uh, name changes for teachers. There could be email addresses um, that get, get updated. We want to make sure that if that is the case, that you do a manual change in the system for that teacher or for those teachers prior to doing a bulk load or automated um, load in the system. Also, with the state IDs for students, when loading those IDs, 
want to make sure to use the correct ID. If there, if the student doesn't have an ID, uh, we have information on our site that can walk you through the process of generating that ID for the student so that they, they can be loaded in the system as well. They won't, but it's important that those IDs are accurate as we link those to the student and we track them in the system that way. We are going to do it manually first. We're going to add a teacher, students, and connect that student to those teachers, as well as unenroll the student from the teacher. So first, what I'm going to do is we are going to update a user information. So this would be a teacher, one of your users, let's say. You want to make sure that you are updating any revisions manually first before you do any balk loads. Because if you do a balk load of, let's say, the teacher's new address or new name, it's going to create a brand new account for that teacher, for that user. So we are going to take a first look here at uh, one of the teachers and update their information manually. Oh, we are going to do, um, I'm actually going to look here at teacher number six, teacher six here. We're going to open on the right hand side and they have had a name change. We are going to update their last name and we are going to update their email address. So if their email address changed, update that. You wanna go down at the bottom and make sure you hit save. You're gonna see the user was successfully updated. Now, at that point, that teacher would make sure that they use that email, that new email address to sign in and they can always select forgot password and it'll take them through their prompts um, to reset that password. Or if they remember, of course, to say it'll be the same password. Now, what I wanna do next is I wanna go back to our users and I'm gonna actually add a user manually here. Select on that right-hand side, add user. And we're gonna select the first name, add that in. The initial location. And we are going to do the specific district here is the ELA test district. Make sure also that you select a role. When you're adding a user manually, if you do not select a role, when the user signs in, they're gonna have a blank screen. And we're seeing that a little bit, just make sure that you have that selected and everybody is initially first listed as a teacher. So you want to select that. You're going to go ahead and enter in their email address. You are going to select and you can do a generic password for them just so they can get into the system and then they can reset that password to something more familiar to them once they are in. You want to select save and open. You got a, one more step you want to do here. You can see the teacher information that is listed here. But what you also need to do is you need to go to the organizations tab here, right next to them, the administrative level, administrative levels, you want to select districts. You're going to see they are added to the ELA test district. However, there's no teacher ID. So you want to make sure you put in their teacher credential ID. That way, when you do the bulk load, you have the correct teacher ID information in there. If not, you will get an error that says user is un ineligible to be assigned this student. So you want to select that little pencil and you want to go ahead and enter in their teacher ID. You can do two things. You can use their email address or you can use their teacher credential ID, which is that two letter seven digit ID number. So for this one, um, we are just going to put that uh, email address in as their teacher ID and hit save. Now you have that in there and you can see that that district was updated so they have that attached. So if you were to add any student via the bulk loader, you will need to make sure you have that teacher ID. All right, so our next step, we are going to add a student manually. Go to your students on the left-hand navigation and select, um, actually there's two different ways. There is this add student button here, um, but actually we're gonna show this other way. I'm gonna go a little deeper into the other way to add the student. So on the left hand, you wanna go to organizations, select view districts, and then view locations. 
and we're going to select view students. This is digging all the way down. So this is less steps for you when you do it this way. So select add student. You are going to put in their SSID number. Their first name. Middle name, if, if you have a middle name for the student. And the last name. Make sure you put in the gender, the race, and then the birth date. So it is formatted specifically here. So you will then need to type the whole year, so 2019. If the student has a disability code, now that will, you will use that if this is marked special education IEP. So yes then you add in the disability code. You would select yes if the, if the student is an English language learner or yes if the low social economic status is yes. At this point, once everything is in there, make sure everything is correct. Hit save and open. And now you have this student, all the details for this specific student. But now we're gonna go a couple more steps. We wanna make sure not only adding the student, but we wanna make sure that they, we attach them to their teacher as well as the specific data collection. So first you wanna go to enrollments and you can see the teacher association. There is no teacher listed here. Select assigned student or assigned teacher. And you are going to find your specific student and click assign. Hit finished, and you do see that teacher was successfully added. And you see the association date. Your next step, your last step that you wanna do is assign the data collection assignment for that student. So currently, there's no one, there's nothing listed here. And when there's nothing listed, the teacher is not gonna see that student on their roster because no assessment has been attached. So you wanna select the assigned data collection. And now currently, the the spring window does not open until February 15th. So the only one you're able to assign at this moment is the winter assessment. So you will be able to hit assign. It's gonna say currently assign down at the bottom, data collection assigned, and then hit finished. And now you're gonna see that the date assigned for the data collection was the February 18th, and it ends on February 14th. All right, so let's go back over to the student side and I wanna show you how you unenroll a student from a teacher. So let's say that Reed Matthew, um, they're no longer here. So we need to, or not no longer here, one of the teachers is no longer attached to that student. So select open and then you will see the details, enrollments and ISR management. Select enrollments. We are going to unassign and remove Carissa from this student. They are no longer the teacher. Now, let's say that the student has left. Student's no longer with you. From there, what you would do for them is just remove the other teacher you have listed here. And so Lindsay at that point would be removed and you would select remove. loading the students via the bulk loader. So adding the students, the teacher in the enrollment file and showing you a little further how everything they're uploading via bulk. Now for time purposes, I did create these files ahead of time, but I'm gonna show you exactly where to find them. Go to your bulk loader on the left-hand navigation. Here you're gonna see the three different tabs. Uploads, this is gonna show all of your uploads that you have done. What has happened? Have they complete? Are they errors? All of your files. Um, your automated, this would be if you had um, the automated service, like Ed stated earlier, for bigger districts at SFTP. So you really want to concentrate more on that uploads and the templates is this last one. So we are going to select a template. The first one we're going to do is the teachers. And again, you want to fit hit 
the all fields template. We highly recommend that. That's just, it's gonna save you updating or adding anything um, to that student or to that user down the road. So at this point, you're gonna have a clean, you're gonna have all of that information. So you would select an all fields template. Once that downloads, you are then able to open that up and enter in your information. And again, for time purposes, I went ahead and created a teacher file. Now, I know we stated earlier when it comes to formatting. So there are districts that have a district ID and a school ID that start with a leading zero. Um, these specific ones do not, but I wanted to kind of show, and I'm gonna put one out here. Um, and you can see on that specific one that, that all of that leading zero there went away. So what we're gonna do is format. You wanna highlight the column, right click, go down to format cells. On the left hand, select custom. Right underneath general, you select that first leading zero. Then put your cursor right back up underneath type so you have that blinking cursor. You're gonna add an additional five zeros. So once you have a total of six zeros there, select okay. And just for, so you guys can see too, here is this leading zero for this specific one now comes back. So you would do that and you are gonna format column A and you're gonna format column C. And again, just right click, we're gonna go down to format cells, custom, and then add in your zeros. Now I have already, again, done these for time purposes and we are gonna just save this. Once you format it, save it. I, highly, I, I recommend just minimizing it. Minimize it down on your screen where you see it go back to your bulk loader because it's a CSV. Once you close a CSV and open it back up, it loses its formatting. So you have to redo that formatting. So just minimize it, you're not closing it. Let's make sure it uploads. You're gonna upload your file, select your template type, select your file, know exactly where you, where you save that. So for me, I know I have saved mine, um, Let's see if I can find, there we go, training. And so I've added all of those here. Once that's attached, select upload. And now you're still on the templates page. So go back to your uploads page and you're gonna see, here's your teacher file that you just uploaded. Your five updates have come back complete. Fantastic. On, on a note, you can go ahead at this point, close this teacher file, you don't need it anymore. So now we're gonna go back to your templates and you're gonna select um, your student template. Again, you wanna do all fields. Once that downloads, you wanna open that up. And again, I've done that for um, you know, time purposes here today. So we went ahead and I got one set up here for you. So we, you can see there's a lot more fields on this specific template there are a certain amount that you need to fill out. And you will see that also on your data guidelines, but you wanna fill out column A to column J, and then we will we'll do W, X, Y, and Z. So we're gonna make sure you format your columns for leading zeros. So you're gonna do the same thing that we did on the teacher file for your district file, district ID and school ID on the student file. And select okay. You're gonna do that for column D. And column H, as stated earlier, does have a specific format. So we are going to highlight that column again and go format cells. We're gonna to go to custom and I am gonna select this first zero, but here's what I do is I just go back and I hit delete. I delete out that zero and I just type in mm backslash dd backslash yyyy. And I hit okay. So now you have a zero eight, a zero one, and then that, that full year. So they all are formatted correctly. Then there is one more column that you would need to format. And this would be the disability code. So you can see that some are single digits, 
some are double digits. You can do the same thing, right click, format cells, custom. We're gonna add one zero here. Just add that, hit okay. And you're gonna see now it comes as a 0809 and now it's all set. So at this point, save that somewhere you can easily find it. Make sure you save it and then just minimize it. We'll go back to our bulk loader. We're gonna upload file. You're gonna select your students as a template type and you are going to locate that file. So I remember I put it right there and upload that file. All right, so it does take some time to process. If it doesn't process within a minute, you can always um, refresh your screen. Um, I would say after 60 seconds or so, um, at this point, I'm just gonna hit that little circle up there, refresh it, and I'm gonna see that now I've got 12 updates. These students are ready to roll. So, but we got one more thing, is the enrollment file. And that is not only gonna connect them to the teacher, but they're gonna connect it to the actual assessment. So select the enrollments and select the all fields. Again, just get, do the all fields template. And I am gonna go back and I have that file already created. So you're gonna to wanna to format the district ID again for leading zeros. You'll do that for each of these. You can see each of these templates that you're gonna be uploading. You'll do it for the school ID and then your date of birth column, you'll format for that. So custom, select that first zero. And again, I just delete it. I find that that's just, you get in that certain rhythm and you just do that. Backslash DD, backslash Y, 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 Y. Hit okay. Now you can see it's formatted correctly. I'm gonna hit save. We've added the teacher IDs, the teacher's first name. And again, this enrollment form Enrollment template is really a combination of your student file and your teacher file. All of this is the main things for your student files. And then these three are for your teacher file. The only thing that you're going to be doing is you're connecting them to that specific assessment and that specific teacher. Once you're ready, hit save and then just minimize. Again, we're going to go back to your bulk loader. You're going to select upload file, template type as enrollments. Now this you see a little bit more. You have this box that says unenroll students by. So what that means is if you were to select this box and select by student, this is a good option if it's a partial file upload. So if you only have five students and you wanna make sure their enrollments are clean and not attached to any teacher, you can do that. If you select the drop down where it's district, and you wanna make sure that they are unenrolled um, from any teacher, right? So all of these students that you have listed here, this is better more for bigger districts. Um, and it doesn't wipe, it doesn't like clear off um, data, it doesn't, it doesn't remove any scores. All it does is basically remove any previous teacher and student associations. That's if you want to unenroll. Again, we're not unenrolling, we're actually enrolling. So we are gonna keep this as is, not check mark anything, and you're gonna select your file. Find your file and upload. Now we can see it's processing. Um, I'm just gonna refresh my screen here just to kind of move it along. Oh, I've got errors. I, what, you wanna see what happened here. Why are these not associated? So you wanna download these validation errors to see exactly what happened. When you open that up, you're gonna see that, yes, we do have this data token, but it's not open yet, for instance. Right now, you're not gonna be able to do this till the 15th. But we also see that there's an error here on this one where it says user's not eligible to be assigned a student. So what happened on that? So you wanna look at these errors to kind of dig a little deeper. So it's something to do with the user. So we wanna look at these columns, something here. And we can see right away that the teacher credential ID number is different than the one above. So we'd wanna fix this, re-say, you know, go back to your main file. So we still have that open. And from here, we'd be able to fix and hit save. So now we could re-upload this again and you wouldn't get that specific error that user is not eligible to be assigned.
So, and like Ed stated, a lot of this, if you use your data downloads um, and, and pull what you've had previously, it kind of helps you better understand of what is actually in there attached to those teachers and what student demographic information you have. There are a couple of other ways that you can get data in. Um, again, the automated data loading process, there are two. Um, the first is with the file watcher. Um, and again, you see the steps uh, listed below here for the file watcher. It is essentially a tool that allows for um, the ability to load a script that essentially looks at a specific folder um, on your machine and then checks for any updates to those folders. And you just it's simply, you drop your information into that folder. It's kind of on a, again, automated process where it will look, if it finds an update, it will go into the K-Ready system and update the file for you. So that's that's a tool that, that can be used as well as the SFTP tool, which um, again, you can um, have the file transfer protocol, secure file transfer protocol set up um, to do that, you'll need to, uh, in both of these cases, you'll need to work with the help desk to get those, those items um, put together and set up for you. But you can access the file watcher uh, software right on the main page of the system. Again, it's specific to uh, the platform, so PC, Linux. Um, uh, it's not available for uh, Mac OS at this time. And again, with the SFTP, this will need to be set up with the uh, help desk. So we, again, we recommend those for larger districts that are really moving lots of data, multiple sites and locations. Um, it's uh, something that we think um, will help streamline that process for them. But uh, again, it's to your discretion. So we'll dive right in the early learning assessment reports here. So the very first one you're seeing is the data downloads report, and this will show all the data that has been loaded for the specific window. Um, so at that point, this is more of a managerial um, to kind of let you know all of the CSV files that have been uploaded into the K-Ready system for teachers and students and enrollments. This is going to let you compare the data that is in the K-Ready system to your student information system, and it ensures the accuracy so you don't have to go through the students one by one. This next report you see is the ELA SKB ratings report. <clears throat> the SKB report is going to show all students in your program with all 72 SKBs listed in the first row and any final ratings entered for each student's SKB. So this report shows the entire ELA tool, uh, or yes, entire ELA, depending on the use of the, the ELA, this specific tool, you may see data for all of the SKBs or just those required 24 that are associated with that 10 learning, prog 10 learning progressions. So, the next one you see here is the, oops, is the ELA learning progression report. And this is gonna be that final report and that's not gonna be available until after the data collection has closed, closed. So this is the report that you're gonna to use to generate, to submit to EMIS and or EAS. And this is gonna show the learning progressions rated ratings for those 10 required. And these are based on what has been entered for those SKBs within that 10 learning progression. So we do encourage that you take a look as a, as a data manager throughout the assessment window to keep an eye um, and look at that ELA SKB ratings report, pull that up and kind of see what has been entered or if there is any missing scores before the end of the window. You want to communicate with those teachers um, if there are any missing that are supposed to be entered in there before the end of the window and before you generate that learning progression report. So I want to go live real fast and I want to show you how to pull those two reports that we were specifically talking about the first two. The last one, um, the learning progression, we'll kind of go through that. 
So the first one is the data downloads report. You want to select the drop down arrow next to create a report and go down to the very bottom where it says data downloads. So here, like I said earlier, this is going to be more of that managerial where you're going to be able to see what you have uploaded for teachers, for students, for enrollment. So that's where that download type comes into play. So you want to see what teachers, for instance, all teachers, or if you want to select active only, what teachers do you have have been have been added? Select your data collection. If you're looking and now again, we recommend doing that if you wanted if you don't do it in the winter, just maybe in the fall, see what you had in the fall. And then select the drop down arrow uh, region is for you know teachers who have or I'm sorry data managers who have multiple districts. If you have just one district, um, you can just go specifically to that. If you wanna look specifically, uh, dig a little deeper to the different locations, you are able to do that as well. But this one, I'm just gonna do the district type and I'm gonna select right next to it is that request district download. And you'll be able to close because you see that report was successfully requested. And you can see on when you look at your reports, the type, the export of teachers, and you will be able to download from there. Now, the next one um, that you are able to pull is going to be the SKB ratings report. So you do see when you're selecting this drop down box that it says ELA reports and KRA reports. Select um, the ELA SKB ratings report. Select your data collection. And we're going to take a look at the fall. So you do see by default, the filter by point of authority is automatically checked. So when it is checked, um, when it's unchecked, it's gonna show all students added to the K-Ready system regardless of point of authority when it's unchecked. When it's checked, it's gonna show only students that you have the point of authority for. So a lot of times with um, preschool students, they are shared. So maybe uh, an ESC or a developmental disability school, or maybe the it's going to be shared possibly. So you can always uncheck that and then select your start date. And we're going to do the, um, we're going to take a look at that fall. So we know that was August 15th. Hit OK. We're going to select the end date which is November, and that is 14th, hit OK. Then you're going to select if you want to look at the location, if you want to look at the district. So depending on which one you are specifically, specifically wanting to look at. So we can just pull the ELA desk test district at that point. You're going to select Generate Report and hit Close. Once that report downloads, opens and downloads there, you'll be able to see all of the students that were attached. And again, it's going to be specific for what we stated earlier, which is the fall. So there were four students here. And we see the scores that have been entered for the fall assessment. So again, you'll be able to see a little deeper and kind of keep track. So if you notice that uh, this specific student up here at the top, there's no scores entered for them. You're going to want to reach out to this teacher and ask, you know, have you gotten, have you done any of this? Is it just you haven't entered score? Just want to keep touch base with them. And then lastly is that learning progression report. And again, it's going to be the very first one right underneath ELA reports. And it's going to ask you for the specific data collection. You'll be able to pull it um, for the fall and when the winter ends here as well. And you can select your filter by point of authority. If it's unchecked, it's going to show all of your students, regardless of point of authority. And then select your district. And that is the one, as you can see in parentheses, parentheses that says for EMIS or for EAS. So it's really important to uh, do that data download for lots of different reasons, but certainly to manage um, the information that's in the system. But another thing we wanted to highlight here is the archive. 
this is important that you're pulling these reports, um, you're uh, adding information into the system, because the archive basically will take a snapshot of what you've done, the activity that you've done throughout the year. And so if you're not pulling these reports, there won't be anything for the archive to capture. And so we're encouraging you to make sure that you do that at the beginning and throughout the, the um, assessment that you're pulling these reports, you're looking at the data downloads to see uh, which teachers may need extra nudging to kind of get this uh, the work done, capturing of the student scores uh, completed, um, so that uh, uh, as you're doing that, you're able to uh, create this snapshot, you're able to create this archive of activity in the system. If there's no activity, there's no archive. The major supports for the system are certainly the Ohio Department of Education. Um, that's the place to go for any policy information, um, any kind of training from the standpoint of teacher training. That's where you want to make sure you send, you're sending your teachers to to get those uh, kinds of uh, resources and activities and information. That's the place to go. And then as far as any kind of technical work specific to data managers, we uh, want to make sure that you are aware of the help desk and the uh, services that we are providing for you. As you see here on the screen, the phone number, we want to make sure you have that. Reach out to us if you need assistance. We have some resources that we think will be very helpful. The videos and the support files that we have on our site, we think will be very helpful for you to go back to. Certainly, we know this is a lot of information we're giving you in a very short period of time. We also have videos uh, on many of the topics that we're talking about. You can go to our site now, click on data managers, and go through those resource links uh, for those topics that you have questions on that we are very, very sure uh, you'll be able to uh, get the answers to. And if not, and we certainly, uh, again, highlight the fact that the window will open next week on the 15th. You'll be able to gain access to the spring collection. That will close on May 14th, and we give you until May 23rd as data managers to do any kind of cleanup that you need to do to, again, finalize your reports that you're submitting. And we hope that the uh, reports, the uh, learning progression reports will be available by uh, early June. Again, we'll want you to stay tuned. We'll send out an update message so you'll know when that uh, is available for you to access.